my friends. It's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multifarious Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today for this special Advent edition. I hope you guys are doing well. And um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. This is not going to be a normal podcast episode. This is actually going to be a special little episode. I did remember my microphone this time. I forgot in the other episode I recorded today, so sorry about that. I do usually like having my microphone. It helps. I have a very soft voice, so... I uh, hope you guys can hear me well. But we're going to talk about Advents today. And I'm really excited. I have my Advents for this year with me. And I'm going to talk about some ideas for Advent. If you're looking for some fun ideas for Advent knitting and you're just not sure yet and you're receiving your Advents and you're like, gosh, I just don't know what I want to make. I am here to help give you some inputs and pointers. I hope you have something cozy to sip on or cool, depending on your climate where you're at. All right, Advents. What Advents do you want to knit? Okay, well, here we go. <clears throat> Advents come in many different shapes and sizes. <laughs> there are uh, Sunday Advents, so you get four, like maybe four skeins of yarn, full size skeins. Um, sometimes they're minis, it just depends. And sometimes there's minis that are 24 skeins. Sometimes they're 25 skeins. Sometimes they're 10 grams. Sometimes they're 20 grams. Um, they really vary greatly. And the fun part with that is that you can do so many different things with projects. And I actually have a couple of my projects right to the side of me here. I'm going to grab them. So hold a sec. <laughs> I should have grabbed them and I didn't. So I, I grabbed my examples to show you. Two of my examples I actually have wrapped up because they are for sale. So um, definitely hop on over to the website. I don't know when you're watching this, so they may have sold out because I only have one of each, but um, I didn't, I wasn't wearing them. I didn't wear them. So I wanted somebody to wear them and enjoy them. I very much enjoyed knitting them though. Okay, so past advents that I have knit, um, mainly shawls, primarily shawls. I knit a lot of shawls. And I have knit a blanket. So I have a couple examples of, let's see here, patterns. So I'm just going to go through some patterns that I have knit before. And then I'll talk about some that I think would be fun to do. So I have knit the Advent Envy by Amanda Rios. That is one of the ones for sale. So I don't have it here to show you. But... It is really fun. It is divided by day. And it is one that is designed for a 25 day advent. So if you have a 25 day advent, this would be a really easy pattern to follow. It's divided up, like I said, um, and it, it's just, it's really easy to transition from color to color and things like that, it tells you everything. So it really makes it easy. If you want a pattern that you can just jump right into and it walks you through the process and it's designed for an advent, this is a great pattern. So again, that's Advent Envy by Amanda Rios. I will include all of the links to these below. So I really like that one. The other one that is a shawl, this one you can see a picture of here, it's the What Tomorrow Brings by Telly Bean Knits. I will tell you, I printed this out and it is a, well, I guess I printed it twice. I was gonna say, I'm like, so here's what it looks like. Initially, it didn't show you a picture, but um, this is what it looks like. This is in black and white. And this came with my Suburban Stitcher advent from like a year or two ago. Um, by Telly Bean Knits, and it's What Tomorrow Brings. This is a sampler style shawl. I love the sampler styles. It really helps that like each color is each day, and it's, it's just so much fun. Um, this was a, a really fun one. This is one of the shawls I actually have also for sale on the website. It's a huge triangle um, like blanket shawl. So this one's a lot of fun and also designed for an advent, and it is designed for a 20, I think it's a 25 day advent yeah so this one is also designed to be like a 25 day advent specifically advents okay 
the other one here that I did that is designed for Edmonds, but not a shawl, is by Curious Handmade or Helen Stewart, and it's the Habitations Room. So she has remade this pattern, or revamped it, revamped it. So I made it, the first one I made is a mini, uh, or a mini, it's designed for 10 gram minis, and it's a small version. She now has designed it where it has a large version too, so you can use 20 gram minis and use like basically the entire color um, to make a larger throw, which I am very much debating on doing that this year. I'm gonna talk about what I wanna do this year. But um, yes, I loved this. This was a super relaxing pattern. Again, this is designed for an advent and it's super easy to follow. Yeah, really easy to follow. It's a pretty simple pattern, honestly, and it's very beginner friendly. I think it's it's excellent. So I highly recommend this pattern and I will be knitting it this year. So this is the Habitations Row. A very much popular type pattern. It's been around for a while. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, and the other one that is actually not an advent pattern. This is for the adventurous person. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is by Anna Johanna, and it is the Shake It Up Shawl. I have knit this twice. I do not knit patterns more than once for the most part, but I did knit this one twice. And this is like sampler style because it has different styles of like stitch work and textures and, and lace work. And there's tassels that you can make. And it's super fun. And I just made it so that it was for an advent. It's not designed for an advent, but it works really well for an advent. And I'll show you my examples of the two that I made so you can get an idea of what that would look like. Because sometimes it's hard to understand. She used the three colors to make this one, um, but I loved this pattern. I loved it so much that I actually am thinking about doing another one, <laughs> which is wild. Okay. All right, so those are patterns I have knit before, and I definitely recommend them. I enjoyed them. They are a lot of fun. They are, I believe, all paid for patterns, so you would have to buy them, but I definitely recommend them. All right. Now I'm gonna talk about two ideas for Advents that I haven't done yet, but I am thinking about doing. So I am very much thinking, of, well, or do you wanna see my examples? Maybe I'll show my examples first before I talk about the ones I'm thinking about doing. So these are the examples of the past patterns that I have knit for Advents. So this is my Habitations Row using my Multiverse Signature Advent from, I'm pretty sure this is last year's Advent actually. So this is a small version of the Habitations Row. It's about 40 inches, I think is the width. It's a square. It's beautiful. I love it. I'm kind of partial to the colors. Um, I knit it up in such a way that I kind of guesstimated and then I used my last, my 20 day, 25th day for this corner and it ended up being like a majority, like a large portion where the rest, well I guess this one's a, a large portion as well. So that worked out, it worked out okay. And it fades nicely, it, it's a really, really pretty little blanket very cozy. It's like a little throw. It would make a great baby blanket if you want to make someone a baby blanket. This is a really easy knit and it's relaxing because it's garter stitch and then basic lace work. It's really fun and lace work intimidates me sometimes. I really like this one. So this is my habitation row and I'm totally making another one. <laughs> so that is the example for that one. And then these are my two shake it up shawls. So I actually, these are not advent, it's a not an advent pattern, but these are advents. My very, very, very first advent that I ever got as a gift from my husband is this one. And this is from A Chick That Knits. This is probably from like five years ago. I love it. So this <coughs> is that Shake It Up shawl. So I basically made it so I could use my advent. It's split up into sections and then I did some math and figured it out. As you can see, I kind of like alternated colors right here in the middle 
and then I kept going with other colors. It worked out so well. I loved this so much. It definitely got interesting when you get into the brioche end of things because we had to use two colors per brioche section. I think that's how I kind of figured it. Like you had to wait um, to get two colors to be able to do a section. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I think it makes a really beautiful shawl. There's some lace work sections here. It's a lot of fun. Definitely recommend it if you want to try to just have some fun with a pattern that is a lot of fun to make. And this one I made with the tassels. And what I did is I just took remnants of some of my favorite colors from the advent and put them together and made the tassels. And I think I used the same, yeah, I used the same color for all the tassels or colors. Okay, the next one that I made of the Shake It Up shawl, I did not make tassels with. This is using my non-superwash advent um, that I dyed up with the marker, the Cheer Colorways. And I did a similar design where I did the like um, mirroring of color here and there, you can see. But then I also, I did the like two colors into the brioche here, which looks pretty fascinating. It looks really fascinating when you start getting into these colors that are, um, they're not solids, they're speckled colorways and everything. And so I think it makes really interesting transitions. Super fun. These colorways were all inspired by Northern Michigan. I love it. I love how the lace work turned out on this. So pretty and squishy. Love non-super wash. This is Caribbean Highland wool. So cozy. This is super warm. Yeah, really beautiful shawl. And again, this pattern is not designed for Advent. So you just, you basically just have to kind of figure out how to divide it up, which isn't really hard. It just takes a little bit of math, um, but you can easily do that with any pattern for the most part. You can do it for garments, anything. All right. Now we'll get into patterns that I would, I think might be fun to do. Uh, this one, is by Anna Johanna. This might be a free pattern. It's called Surprise Stripes. They're socks. They are like thigh high socks. So super fun. Um, they're not necessarily designed for an advent. They're designed for scraps, but you could totally use an advent for that. And what you could do is divide up your colors in half and you could do two at a time socks. That's one idea or one sock at a time, but divide up both each of your skeins into two basically even weight balls and you can knit these. I think that would be really fun way to use up your yarn um, or scraps that you have. So this is a fun idea. If you don't want to make a shawl, if you want to make socks for your sock knitter, that's an idea. Another one that I purchased recently is by Kristen Laudner. She, um, she had a sale going on and it's her stoker. Shawl. Now this is a, not the best picture because it's a really dark shawl. Maybe you can see it. There's actually a tassel here. It's really pretty. It's Victorian inspired. Um, there's lace work here, which is really hard to see again because it's a dark color with a dark background. But um, this I saw in um, some folks used multiple colors and did like a fade. I feel like a shawl like this would be really nice for a fade. If you know your advent is a fade, this would be really nice. I am debating using my, which I don't know if it's a fade, but I am debating if it ends up being a fade. <laughs> I am debating using my um, Wild in the Woods advent for this. I do know it is all non-superwash yarn. It is all Canadian wool. So I think it would make a beautiful, very warm shawl. This is designed to be a DK weight, but she does also have a fingering weight. The fingering weight's a little smaller, I think is what she said. Um, but I think this would make really beautiful if you have like a fade. And then you could take like a little from all the colors and make the tassels. I think that would be really beautiful. Um, so I am debating doing that with my Wild in the Woods, depending on that if it's a fade or not. I don't know. But if it's a fade, I think it would be really pretty in this. Again, 
and I'll have to basically do some math and figure out how to make that into like an advent. All right, um, so yeah, so when it comes to that, all right, when you try to think of what should I do for advent, look at it different ways. So either you are someone who's looking for something just to tell you what to do, right? Like you want a pattern that's just gonna be like, here's what you do day one, here's what you do day two, here's what you do day three, and this is designed for advents. Look for advent patterns. If you go onto Ravelry, um, you can put in advent in the search engine. You can also, there are so many advent patterns out there um, that are designed like uh, definitely for advent. And some are free, just like, and some are, and not only that, but a lot of people do like coupons and like discounts right now because of the time of year and people are getting advents. So definitely look for that. Search for advents. You can even go on like Google and search advent pattern, uh, advent knitting pattern, advent crochet pattern. These are all knitting patterns. Full disclosure, I should say that. Um, I primarily am a knitter. I don't crochet that much. I do sometimes though, but I just, I primarily knit. So these patterns are definitely more knitting adjacent, but um, that's to say, I, I'm sure there's wonderful advent patterns out there for crocheters. This is just what I've knit and what I've made and what I'm very interested in making. So uh, there's that. But yeah, like keep, keep it basic. That's, I guess that's one of my biggest things is keep it basic. Like that would probably be my biggest suggestion. Keep it basic. Um, if you want to be relaxed, if you want to do Advent in a relaxed, meditative way, where you don't have to think about it that much and just relax, definitely look for Advent patterns. Those will help so much for that. Um, the other thing you could do is look for a pattern that isn't necessarily an Advent pattern, but is a pattern that you can just knit as you go and it's fine, like um, blanket patterns. Blanket patterns are a perfect example of that, where it might be like, okay, when you feel like starting to decrease to make your blanket get smaller, um, this is when you start doing that. You know, like it basically gives you the directions to like choose your own adventure. And those are perfect for knitting with like a magic knot ball or like advents where you're knitting from one color to the next. It's just so easy to do that. So I would say like blanket patterns are really good for that. Um, not a lot of texture stitches. If you, <sighs> I gotta be careful about this because I, okay, so these shawls, um, I, obviously there is a lot of texture going on and then there's also lace work. So, but I did this for the fun of it. I won't really see the lace work that much. You can in this because it was non super wash, so it's really fluffed up and, and holds its shape well. But if it's if it's super wash, it slips and slides and sometimes it's not as visible. And if you've got a really speckled colorway, a really variegated colorway, you will lose the texture, you will lose the pattern. Um, it's better to do like garter stitch or uh, stockinette stitch patterns, like for example, Stoker. It has lace work here and it has lace work on the bottom but if you're doing speckled colorways or variegated colorways up here that's better because this is all stuck in like our garter stitch up here i think it's our stucking at and garter stitch so like that would be really good for those type of patterns um let's see what else here uh yeah divide into sections so look for patterns you can divide up if it's something like the shake it up shawl where it actually is like i think there's 13 sections you can then take that however big your advent is and divide up and figure out like where you want to put your colors it's really easy to do that it just takes a few moments and little notes here and there and you'll be good to go and you can have a really unique advent shawl or blanket or you could do something sweater too i mean honestly you really could if you want a super fun sweater <laughs> you could totally do that um i've never done it but you could totally do it. Um, yeah, just, and my, and my other biggest, so keep it simple. And my other biggest thing is knit something that you're really excited about, like really excited about, because um, 
if you're if you're like me and you want to knit on your advent every single day in December and have it done in a month, you are going to be knitting on it every single day and it, you have to really want to knit on it. <laughs> The fun part about Advent is that you're knitting a different color a day, and so it really promotes, like, go and keep going. It really promotes that potato chippy, you want to knit the next color, and it's a lot of fun. So that helps. It helps so much. So that's one of my favorite things about doing, like, a 24 or 25 day Advent is that there's just all these fun colors, and it's just so much fun to knit each color each day, and then at the end, you have a finished item. And I cannot emphasize this enough. It can take you a long time to knit like a shawl or garments. Don't get me wrong. But if you commit to, now granted, it might be a half hour a day, which that is a lot of time to commit to knitting. But if you can do that, if you can do that, like a half hour a day or so, you get a whole, you'll have a whole shawl, a whole shawl done in a month. And it's so much fun. It's so much fun. So it really, if you're someone who's trying to get into the habit of knitting every single day and you haven't really been able to make that a priority or like been able to really figure out how to get that into each day I feel like Advent time is a really good way to get that habit in because right isn't it like what 30 days to establish a habit so it's a really great way if you're trying to get into knitting every single day and be able to get things knit and done in a more like a quicker, I guess a quicker amount of time. Um, yeah. Advent knitting is a really great way of getting into that habit of knitting every single day so that you can finish a shawl in a month. You can finish a sweater in a month. It's, it's unreal. You know, you don't think it's possible, but when you do it, it's like, okay, it is achievable. You just really have to focus on it. That also has to do with monogamous knitting. If you're knitting on one project, uh, that really helps you get it done faster too, which that's, I do tend to do that more during Advent season. Um, I tend to usually work on like two projects. I have my Advent projects. That's it. That's all I work on. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing this time around as well. And I'm good with that. It'll be a lot of fun. And I'm really excited. And I hope you guys are too. I hope this was helpful. I hope it gave you some things, fun things to think about, some fun ideas. Um, I mean, I always say, like, keep it in mind when it comes to Advent knitting that, you know, do what's fun for you. If you want to knit a fade and instead of doing, you have, maybe you have a full skein every Sunday in December and you want to knit a sweater or something. I've done that before and that was really fun and it, it um, is really pretty. Actually for that, I have, so I have, I have knit a garment for Advent. I can't believe I almost forgot. So I did um, the Woolberry one. I think that this one was last year. I think it was last year. I did the the Woolberry sweater, the winter box, and that one was four colorways. And um, I think it was four colorways. I think it was four. Pretty sure it was four. <laughs> and I did the um, the resource raglan that is by Sarah Opie. It's a really great pattern, and it's more expensive because it's basically something that you can make so many. You can change it to make so many different patterns, and she gives you all the ways to do that. So it's like a really robust pattern. Um, I mean, it's a book. It's a book, <laughs> basically, and it's it's a great resource. And I loved that. That is one of my best fitting raglan sweaters that I've made. And I used her colorways and I just, that she had given and basically, it's not really a fade. It's, it's kind of striped, but, um, yeah, it's a really pretty, I think it does do actually fading. I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember. It's really beautiful though. So I definitely think you kind of have to know what you're doing. She did suggest that pattern as something that would be really nice for it. So she kind of had planned that's a project that could be knit with all the colors. So you do have to kind of know what you're, if it's going to fade or something. But um, yeah, I do think a sweater with like four colorways, if they're 
nice they look cohesive together or they look kind of like they complement each other nicely you could make a really beautiful sweater so that's another idea too if you're looking for something like that so i probably just threw a whole bunch of information at you but i will include all the links below in the notes section and yeah just i'm excited you guys advent knitting very exciting so i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and i hope this helped you figure out some great ideas for your advent knitting or help you narrow down something if you already have some ideas and um oh yeah i totally forgot i totally forgot to talk about what i was gonna knit with my advents <laughs> my goodness i tell you what all right i think i kind of did but so i have multiple advents this year uh but a couple of them I'm not sure what I'm going to make with them yet because I don't really know what they are. So the primary advent that I purchased was is is Wild in the Woods and this is her 2024 advent. It's a vintage Christmas. Um, vintage Cottage Christmas I think is what it's called. And uh, this one I can't open because it would totally ruin the surprise. But she has five 100 gram skeins in there. I do not know if they're complimentary. I, I'm assuming they kind of are, but I don't know. So I, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to knit with it yet. I could do a sweater. I might do a shawl. I just don't know yet. I think they're single ply. A lot of her yarn is single ply, but it's non superwash Canadian wool. So we'll see what that is. So that's one of them. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to knit with that yet. I have Knit Rain's uh, Bright and Cheery. I think it's Bright and Cheery Advent Sock Set, self-striping. I'll knit a strip a day, and I'm going to do my two at a time, like classic socks. That's my favorite. It'll be easy peasy, and it'll be really relaxing, and I can do a color a day, and I'm really looking forward to that. Socks are really easy to do. And then this one, I love the box. It's so fun. This is my wool swap buddy, Robin, out of Quebec, Canada. And she um, and I swapped 24 10 gram minis. This is going to be my habitation throw. I am debating if I want to do the large habitation throw. So the small is 10 gram minis. The large is 20 gram minis. But I have this idea. I'm thinking maybe I might do the larger one, use the color a day, but then also use I have to figure out the math and all that, um, but use like a color, not sure which color, but one of my colors as a color to knit like in between each color. And that might add the right amount of yardage to make the larger because I kind of want to try the larger one. The larger one's 52 inches instead of 40. So I kind of want to make the larger one. We'll see. But I definitely want to do that for this, the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. Okay, and my last advent that I'm going to be working on is Hand Spun Advent. This is um, the True North Advent by Melly Knits. It is all fiber, so I have to spin this up. So I have one gram of each fiber bundle. I don't know what the fiber is yet. Um, they are all medium wool braids. Uh, out of Canada, 13 different ones, mixed with alpaca. So it should have some nice drape to it, but I do not know how many yards I will have because I haven't spun it. It's gonna be hand spun. So I'm not sure, it'll probably be a shawl. I think I'll end up making a shawl out of it. I just don't know which one. I would love to do the Stoker shawl by um, this one, by Kristen Lautner, but I just don't know if I'll have enough yardage. So we'll see what happens. So I'm going to aim for a DK weight. <laughs> I'll aim for DK and we'll see what happens. It's, it's supposed to be four skeins, I think. Yeah. Four skeins of the DK. So we'll see what I end up with. If I do have enough, that's a 13 day advent. So after I'll be, uh, I'll spin each day and hopefully apply it that same day and then I'll wash them all together and then I'll be able to figure out my yardage and hopefully I'll be able to do this one because I think this would be really pretty I don't know what the colors are gonna look like I don't know if it's gonna be a fade I literally have no idea <laughs> 
So I really won't know what I'm going to do for my True North advent until I am done spinning it, basically. Um, because I just won't know the yardage and I won't know the color, like what it's going to look like. And I feel like shawls, you really could get away with anything, but this one, because it is solid and then it adds some lace at the bottom, I think it really lends itself to like a fade. I think a fade is definitely needed to do this one. But that's my opinion. That's just my opinion. Okay, so there you go. That's it for this, this episode. Um, for the advent knitting end of things. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. And if you enjoyed this, this is different than my, I mean, similar to my normal content, uh, but I tend to talk about knitting, my hand dyed yarn. I um, am the owner and dyer behind Maltaris Nature. And so I, this is some of my hand dyed yarn behind me. So if that content um, excites you at all and hand spinning, definitely make sure you subscribe to my channel and um, there'll be more content. If you hit the bell, you'll be notified when I post new videos. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Take care. Bye.